A while back when DevKit released his Step 8 video, there were a few people in the chat that were wondering about using uh, Step 8 as a shift register to sequence the five voices of Odessa, uh, at least when you have the Hell Expander, so you can make uh, use of the polyphony. This is my main melody that I made with Mosquet 2. This melody is going to generate 3, but it's also going to the input of step 8, which receives a clock from Ostankino, but you can just as well use the gate output of Mosquet 2. In a patch like this, it doesn't make any difference. And this melody is getting, yeah, sampled and held by step 8. And right now Odessa is in single voice mode, so it's really just as if none of these other cables were connected and there's just only one stage of sample and hold going on for the melody. I'm using two outputs of Odessa, but they're going through a mid-site matrix kind of balance them out. And when we listen to generate 3 on top of that, you can hear that these melodies are the same, apart from the slide, which you can get if you switch step 8 into track. And you can hear that there's some stepping going on and this is because everything you sent into hell is getting quantized to semitones. I don't want the glide in there, so let me switch it to sample. And now let's activate the five voices of Odessa. And now you can hear how this 8-step melody is getting distributed in a very musical way to the five voices of Odessa. I've routed the sound of generate 3 through beats. And let me just turn everything on beats up to 11. And I've extracted a sequence for a bass VCO as well with the black cable. Let me bring it in. Now, this might be a little bit dissonant. Let me use this sequence instead. And I find this very beautiful. And of course, you can go ahead and just change out the melody. With certain notes, it will sound a bit dissonant. But there's not a lot that you can do wrong with a patch like this.
let's just listen to Odessa by itself for a moment and let me connect the fundamental output instead of the base VCO I was using here. This is just Odessa. I'm using all the outputs. Let me slow this melody down a bit. Let's bring back in Genera 3 going through beats. Add some modulation to Odessa coming from orbit 3. I like to modulate the warp parameter, it seems to have a drastic effect. Let me switch to a different scale. And you can hear that certain notes don't work, just like not every note in a scale always works together. It kind of depends what the chord is in the background.
Let's move on to the next patch with the Rides in the Storm SED filter. Someone was wondering how SED will sound when you really drive the inputs. So let me connect this uh, pulse wave to the mix input. There's some pulse width modulation going on. Let me open the cutoff. Now this is with the level at this setting. I will turn it up in a moment. But let me first connect, getting confused by my cables here, another VCO to the input. This one is even VCO and I'm using a saw wave. So that's already a really full sound there. Counterintuitively, if you engage the overdrive circuit, the output actually goes down a bit in volume. Let me disengage it again. And there's this boost knob here. When the resonance is down, it does not do a lot. You can hear as soon as the resonance is up a bit, the boost knob actually adds a tremendous amount of bass. So let's do this without the boost. You can hear that this sounds much more flimsy. Let's try this with the overdrive engaged. So let's add some resonance. And then with the boost completely to the right. Now let's add a third VCO and let's bring it in using these knobs here. This is a mixer section. So I turned down the boost and I disengaged the overdrive section. The VCO I added is actually kind of a chord coming from the 4MS Ensemble Oscillator. Now let me turn up all the levels to the max. And this is without the overdrive circuit engaged. Let's add some resonance. Let's boost the lows. It's turned up completely. And now let's go through the same thing with the overdrive circuit engaged. Let's turn up the resonance. Now let's add some boost. And let's turn it up completely. Now I prefer the sound of this filter with the overdrive disengaged and the boost up a bit. And 
now let's add um, where did I here let's add some modulation to the frequency you can connect something to the envelope input here and this is an envelope well actually it's a mix of two envelopes being triggered by two different probability gates that follow the same clock There's actually a built-in VCA as well, which I'm not using at the moment. And you need to use uh, this output and you send an envelope in here to control the amplitude of your sound. Let's briefly listen to this with the overdrive engaged. disengage it again and let's add some reverb to this This patch is, well, it's not really a vocoder patch, but it's close. And for this, I'm using the ADEC 601. And normally when you would make a vocoder, you use two of these. One is used to um, analyze the separate frequency bands of 
Well, I guess that would be the modulator. So you send, for example, a voice through here. And every separate band has an envelope follower. So what the fixed filter band, a uh, bank, sorry, in that context does is, yeah, just analyze uh, the amplitude of every uh, fixed frequency band. And then what you would normally do is send something like a synth through a second one of these with the filters or the frequencies for the fixed filters at the same frequencies. And then when you use the envelope followers for every band to control the amplitude of the bands on the filter bank that's, well, filtering um, the carrier, the synth, then you get a vocoded sound out of that. I don't have two of these. What I do have is a few bandpass filters, so I used those to modulate my carrier. Let me turn down this chord. I made a drum patch. This is mixed on the mix KM here. And now it's routed straight to my interface, but I'm using the sense on this guy here to send this drum track or drum patch at least the sounds of the patch to the input of the filter bank and what I then did was use three bands to control three filters so to make sense of this let me I used a chord output from the 4MS Ensemble Oscillator. I've split up that chord using a stackable. One copy is going to Ripples, which is taking care of the lowest band. A second version of these chords is going into the Synth System VCF, which kind of takes care of the middle band. And then another copy of this, which is coming from here, I've routed that one through the Freetom Modular Steve's MS-22 and this takes care of the highest bands. And then I'm just using three outputs here which are envelope following my input which is this drum. And you can see the LEDs light up for the bands that are active. You can just as well open all of them up because I'm not really listening to the output of the filter bank anyway. There's one more step to explain. So I've taken the output of these filters, the Ripples one, which takes care of the lowest band is on a low pass setting. The middle one is on a band pass setting and then the MS-22 is, is kind of in a high pass setting. I'm taking the outputs of all of these three filters into Hexmix VCA, which is just off screen here. So essentially it's a mixing VCA and I'm using the envelope outputs here of three bands to control the amplitude of yeah, the sounds going through these filters, which is just one chord coming from the ensemble oscillator. And let me unmute it so you can finally hear how this sounds. <laughs> So 
let's listen to the separate bands. So this is just a chord going through ripples. And I'm using the envelope follower here to control the amplitude. It's all sounding a little bit distorted because I'm mixing it on another one of those feedback mixers. It's the Mix CR. I'm trying to figure out which one I like the best. But they distort really quickly. Which sometimes is great, but not always. So this is the lowest band. Then we have the band going through the synth system VCF. And then the highest band, which is going to the MS-22 here. And now, when I mix them together again... And let's mix in the drums. Anyway, I tried it a while back and then I was using a vocal recording but because I have limited bandpass filters the sound coming out of my vocoder contraption wasn't very illegible. So I thought using drums might work better. Thank you very much for watching this I'll make a video about it video. If you want to see something featured on the next uh, video in the series, let me know in the comments. I hope you learned something. Bye!